How's everybody doing out there? I'm Paris Bowles with Double Time Entertainment here with the lovely Love Joy, uh, Petersburg native, up and coming uh, female R&B artist. Um, you know, just here talking with her today, trying to find out a little information, figure out everything that's going on with her career. Um, so, Love Joy, how's everything going? Everything's great. Hi, everybody all out right, there. All right. Just, we understand that you're from Petersburg. You know, just. Tell me, you know, exactly where in Petersburg you're from, you know, the schools you went to, different things like that. All right, first I want to say um, it's an honor to be here and just to even be interviewed um, someone from Petersburg. It just, it is an honor to happen to have the opportunities and the advantages that I've had in this industry and to be able to be known as a singer in this area. I am from Petersburg, that is true. I'm from an area called Fifth Ward. Um, consists of a neighborhood, a few streets, a few blocks, um, and I love it. I love where I'm from. I love everything about my neighborhood and my neighbors and everyone around. Um, as a child, I went to school in that area, a school called Westview Elementary School. From there, I went to Peabody Middle, and then I graduated from Petersburg High School. So um, I love Petersburg. I love Virginia in itself. I've been to a lot of different cities and a lot of different states, and I can honestly say I'm always glad to come home. All right, Miss Lovejoy, you seem to be a you know proud product of Petersburg, Virginia, and you know on the music side of it, you know what what exactly what genre of music do you list your, yourself or categorize yourself in? Well, I would say that I categorize the genre of music that I like to perform as R and B. Um, rhythm and blues has been around for so long, and even in rhythm and blues, there are different aspects in, in which you can go. You have R and B soul. R&B hip-hop, um, even R&B rock, I like to think. Um, I'm more of an R&B, flat R&B with a little hip-hop involved. Um, I can do some soul things, but I'm, I would not say that I am a neo-soul artist. More of an R&B. I love um, taking love aspects and um, just life aspects and turning them into masterpieces of music in which everyone can relate to because a lot of the times people all too often go through things and they don't think that anyone else goes through those same things so I love to be able to transform my life experiences into lyrics that can touch other people's lives. Okay, you, uh, you seem to be really enriched in the genre of R&B music. Um, it, it can be present day or, or past, you know, who, who are some of your influences in the music industry that, you know, kind of drew you into the R&B genre? Well, there are quite a few people who I can speak on and say that those persons have been a major positive influence in my choice for music as well as my sound and my love for music. Um, I guess some more seasoned artists would be those like Shaka Khan and Luther Vandross, Anita Baker, um, let me think, let me think, who else, Diana Ross, um, all the major R&B and the major soul singing moguls of the industry um, have really paved the way for not just myself, but other artists that are currently in the industry. You know, they've given them a, um, I guess, a sense of a foundation as to how singing should be and how it should make others feel. Um, I guess up to today, I think I, 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 I'm, I flock more to artists such as, of course, Beyonce. Um, you have um, Jill Scott. She's more Neil Soul. Other artists who I think I really, really, really like are um, yeah, John Legend, Jamie Foxx. Um, just quite a few. I mean, the list can go on and on and on. There's so many people that are really doing big things now that have, have in retrospect, brought the old school into the new and are creating moguls of today in which our children's children will be able to look back and mold themselves after them. Okay, I hear you say that, you know, a lot of your influences were artists from back in the day, you know, 80s and 70s, early 90s, you know. When, when, when did, you know, your, your love for music and, and, and your background in music kind of start? Was it at an early age, you know, because you seem to be, you know, well seasoned and versed on music from back in the day. Uh, back in the day, yes. Um, I'm blessed to say that music has always been a major component in my upbringing. Um, my entire family, we're all musically inclined in more than one way. Um, needless to say, my musical experiences began in church. As a child, you know, it was 
very, very common, actually expected for us to wake up on Sunday morning, go to Sunday school, go to church, and in church we participated in everything from the usher board to being an acolyte, reading the scripture, and most importantly singing in the choir, which was the break, the groundbreaking of my entire music career. Um, I always sang in the children's choir, and I can remember being a little girl singing like a little girl, but actually being able to really sing, but being afraid of the reaction. So once I finally showed everyone that I can sing, it was over. Uh, everybody always wanted me to sing a solo and everything like that. And that, that just was a really positive thing to have your church family behind you 100% in your career, and even just pushing you to try to make you believe in yourself and whatever the gifts that God had given you. And in my case, it was the gift of voice. Um, after that, growing up, you know, school choirs. And then when I got into middle school, I decided that I wanted to follow in the footsteps of my uh, older brother and sister and join the marching band. And the marching band actually became the key component in my perseverance and my discipline, my determination, and my dedication to music. It taught me so many different things, so many different aspects of being a follower first, learning how to take command, and learning how to uh, pay your dues, and then actually being a leader as I moved into roles from instrument to actually leading the marching band. And um, by having those that, that foundation, it has really helped my career today by giving me patience and allowing me to wait and um, knowing that everything is going to have its turn and everything is going to have its time. And um, I can actually, actually say that the band director, Mr. David G. Chainless, who has always been like a father to me, is one of the main people who instill those, um, those, those mindsets that I was raised with um, about music and the love of music, the importance of music, how music is the, um, the international language. Everybody can come together and do music, you know. I don't care how you speak, what language you talk. Music is, is, uh, is, is, is key in my life. So it's always been, been around ever since a child from church through high school. And even after that, you know, singing with groups, doing high school um, talent shows, singing back up with groups, and um, just doing anything and everything I can to um, express myself through music. And that has always been a key thing in my life. Baby.